What's going on everyone? It's Mike, Skinny Boy. I hope you're well. Um, this is actually take two of a video that I want to do because the first one was like 45 minutes long and you don't want to listen to this voice and look at this beautiful face for that long, I can promise you. But what I'm going to be doing today, I've had quite a lot of people ask me over the last few months about the different barbecues I've got, the points I really like, if there's anything I don't quite like about it, but also if I could only have one pit, which would it be? What would be my go-to um, if somebody was only going out and buying one? Now, as always, you know, I appreciate everyone's support. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and follow on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, whatever else you can see me on. You know, the support really does mean a lot to me. At the end of this video, I'm going to be talking about a something that I'm going to be doing. It's something I'm going to be starting very soon and there's going to be some dates coming out um, but i'm going to go through that at the end i'm going to try and keep this one to about 10 minutes i'm already a minute in so without further ado let's take a look at what's inside the skinny shack now i just want to show you that because it was a father's day present and i love it so the first thing we've got which sits in that corner there um is my gosney dome and i've pulled it out of here because in the corner it's in it's a little bit dark um so what I will say about this is it's a phenomenal piece of kit. I love cooking on it. Um, the bits still knock me, which is what I explained about in the beginning, like with the misalignment around the, the tops here, around the bottom. But overall, I love cooking on this. I've done so many different types of food. Um, but let's talk about some of the features. So you can get this in a dual... Um, fuel so you've got the gas and the wood i believe you can just get it as like the gas um however i've gone for the jewel because i love cooking on on the wood and i've cooked so much on this from steaks to scallops to fish to baking bread you've got your digital display down here um and then you've got your igniter here now, your igniter can get a bit frustrating because it doesn't kick in straight away. You're going to have to be patient. It'll take about a minute. Um, the new ashtrays have started to come through now. Um, actually, with the domes, I believe. As if you haven't got one already, you should get a link um, from the store you bought it from, giving you like a voucher to go buy. Now, this is a huge talking point. Every time people come around, they love watching me cook on it. They can't believe how fast the pizzas go. And it, I really do, really, really do love cooking on it. The little finishing touches, they knock the hell out of me because of what it costs. Still to this day, and I've had it for over a year. Um, but overall, it doesn't affect the performance. And like I said, I've done so much on this. I should actually post more about the different types of cooks, but I just tend to post about the pizzas. Um, the one thing that I wish they'd have done, well, two things I wish they'd have done differently. Number one, I wish there was a bigger stack on the top bigger airflow stops the black bit coming across the front i do like that actually because it gives a bit of authenticity with the barbecue and another thing i wish that i've actually included a uh, pizza peel with it you know it's a lot of money i just wish they'd included a pizza peel maybe they will in the future maybe they won't but hey one thing i say is the stand itself is really well made fantastic quality um wooden shelves knock me a little bit because you end up having to sand them down and treat them yourself but um ultimately the stand is about 289 pounds and it is a great buy and a great addition with this dead easy to wheel around um talking of gosney let's go through the rocker box now unlike the dome you do get a uh, pizza paddle with this one um as standard it comes with a gas attachment however you can go out there and get yourself a wooden attachment. Now, I haven't used mine yet. I've had it since Christmas uh, and I will be using it very, very soon. But yes, I went for the signature edition. I've got the green one and I really, really, really want the yellow one. But that's because I just like it. It's really bright. Um, these are really dead easy. Pop in the bottom, twist across. Now, if you've seen in the channel before, I did have an Uni Corral 16 and in truth, had I known a little bit more about the rocker box, I would have saved a couple of hundred pounds and gone with the rocker box. Um, these things are phenomenal. If it's just me, my wife, and my little girl, 90% of the time, I'm going to be firing this up. I'm going to have quite a few people come over. Any more than four or five, then I just love getting the dome out. But I got the black signature. Like I said, I've got the green. I really want the yellow. Um, I will get one one day, trust me. Um, on this side here, you've got your temperature gauge to monitor the dome itself. It's really handy guys if you've got 
one of these, just a little laser to get onto the actual stone itself. Cause you, it's all about the stone temperature as well when you're cooking pizza, you need to get that right up to kind of that four, 450 degrees. But that is my one. While we're over here, you've probably seen me talk about this. I've partnered up with them now, but we have got my Elfin kitchen. You've got the kitchen unit here and you've got the side table there. That side table is brilliant for things like the rocker box, the range, ranger, sorry, and that will go underneath there. It's great. Um, I chose to go for the option with the sink and with the induction. You can scrap both of them. You can have a gas hob if you wanted to, with or without a fridge. You've got plenty, plenty storage in this. And in your fridge as well, you've got, a little freezer section in there so that's great and for me i do love the induction it's a lot safer when i've got little isabella around as well so 304 stainless steel so which you'd expect made in germany very very well made and i now have water cannot begin to describe how great it is having a water supply out here now where i can just wash a couple of things up even wash my hands um, which is brilliant. So next thing we're gonna talk about real quick is the Ranger. So next one for me to talk about is my Traeger Ranger. Now I have absolutely fallen in love with this. This is so convenient and so easy if I'm just firing something up for me or me and a mate. Basically flip the lid, you've got your cooking grate, porcelain uh, coated cooking grate there, but it comes as standard with this cast iron plate as well. Your pellet hopper is on the left hand side inside the unit itself. Pellets get fed into the firebox, which is about in the middle, and you're ready to go. Digital display, dead easy to use. Um, and the grease trap is on oh, the back side, the back side there. Um, now, like I said, this one is just perfect. Um, to have a nice small barbecue. Now I used to have the Kamado Joe Jr. Um, I did sell that one now as long as, uh, as well as the Classic 3 and the Kettle. They just weren't getting used. Um, I'd had my eye on a Ranger for such a long time. And when I got one, it was one of SoCal's Christmas deals. The price they were doing, it was just too good to be true. So 100% I got it. It's electric powered. Um, so you can take it away. Uh, you can run it out on an extension. Um, it's about 40-ish kilos. Um, so yes, it's going to be a bit weighty, but I believe you can get a separate like carry case and everything for it. Um, I'm sure you can, I've seen one. So comment below if you, if you, if you, if I'm right. Um, but yeah, it gets the temperature so quickly. Um, and it makes amazing barbecue and it's cooking on wood pellets. So that is my Traeger Ranger. So, so far we've covered the Gosney Dome. Um, like I said, so much fun to cook on that. It's such a versatile piece of kit. Uh, the next thing we covered was the rocker box. Again, that's a little tank, and I wish I'd have got that over the uni very, you know, from the beginning. But you know, we live and we learn. This is why I'm doing this channel so I can I can, I can kind of share with you experiences and, and other things. Traeger Ranger, phenomenal again piece of kit. I don't have a bad thing to say about that. It's so easy to use, and what's a, it's a pellet grill, um, but it's actually really good size as well. You get six, probably six good smash burgers. Um, do you know what? Probably two whole chickens on that. Not massive chickens, but medium, small chickens. So, you know, you get a good get a good cook out of that. And then my Elfin Kitchen, you know. I, don't forget when you do contact them, reference Skinny Boy because they will give you 5% off. Um, but if you want like an outdoor addition just to kind of complete everything, it's, it connects by your garden hose. You can put like a little water heater in the bottom of it um, and the waste just goes out. It's, it, it, it honestly is, it's completed the shack. But now we're gonna go ahead and talk about the boil. Now, if you have been following me for a little while, you know that I'm one of the Boil King ambassadors, which I'm super proud to be. Um, and the reason why I'm gonna talk about this real quick is because I had the Crown 500, which is the model down from this one. Um, and in truth, I loved it. Like a pellet, in my head, in, in the way I see it, is a pellet grill is a pellet grill you're basically gonna get the same kind of results no matter which one you go for within reason, they were within reason. However, one thing I fell in love with on the Boil King is the design of it. Uh, in the previous video, I actually split it all out and 
took out all the guts out of it to show you, but I'm not gonna do it this time because like I said, I'm trying to keep things as informative as possible, um, but also give you that kind of uh, information as well uh, where I'm not boring you. Um, by the way, I'm gonna leave links down below for everything. Um, so you can go out and get these from places that I recommend going and get shopping from. Uh, whether that means anything to you guys or not, you may have your own suppliers, but these people that I've just had like exceptional service from myself, customer service on point, I've got to know the guys as well through like the channel and, and other things. But let's talk about walking. So one thing that you won't see because I've taken it off is I had a big shelf on the back there, um, but with space wise, it doesn't allow me to do it. Now, you are going to get your digital display with Broking and your three quick, easy buttons, whether you want to sear, roast, you know, that's in there. Um, you get a nice big hopper. I've got this prepped because I'm going to be doing some pork butt soon. And on the inside of it, excuse, I've got this little mess here. But on the inside of it, one thing I love about this is you get your cast iron cooking grates. Now, I got seriously impressed with this um, when it came to steak searing. It overperformed in my expectation uh, to the point where I almost ruined the steak. Um, you do get your porcelain coated top shelf. I just never really have it in there. Um, but like I said, you've got your one, two, three, five cast iron grates. When you want to clean out your firebox, dead simple down the bottom here, it's just a case of give it a bit of a wiggle and a shake and all the ash and the, you know, the ruined pellets all just come down into this little chamber in here. Um, comes on you with your little wheels as caster wheels as well. Now, there is one thing, um, and it is not anything to do with performance or anything else. It is mainly because of my design of this. The only thing that frustrates me a little bit is the chimney stack because it's right at the back of the grill. And it's quite large. It means that I can't have it as close to the wall as what I'd have liked. So I've had to kind of pull everything out to be in line. And the reason probably why they've done that is on the left hand side here, as standard, this comes with a rotisserie kit, which is brilliant. Um, and they've got my rotisserie bracket just there. Uh, really, really quiet, really, again, haven't had an issue with it, didn't have an issue with the last one. Think it's an amazing thing. Uh, one thing I want to point out in this as well is, again, with the design, which you won't be able to see in here, but the grease management system. Now, what I mean by that is a lot of pellet grills and, or barbecues in general have, um, in my, from my experience, it's a pain in the ass to get the grease all out. For example, the old Timberline 1300, and I know on a couple of others, they have a grease channel, um, probably at the front here of the grill. I found a decorator's tool, which kind of looked like a diamondy triangle thing, which used to just go in and just scrape everything out, which was great. Um, but with this, very, very easy. The sides and the, the top all have wings all around the grill. So no matter where you put your food, all of the grease and everything is going to go into the tray, funnel down to the end, and there's a big grease trap, which then goes straight through a tube, straight to the grease trap at the bottom. Everything is where it needs to go. So in my opinion, if you were going to be looking at balking, um, the uh, I will say... Not the new Traegers like the Timberline XL, which I'm going to come on to in a minute, or the Ironwood. But if you're going to compare it, in my opinion, with some of the uh, pit bosses that I've seen, um, the uh, the Traegers like the the current Ironwoods and the Pro Series, like I believe, in my opinion, that the Boar King has a better design when it comes to little things like the grease trap. Also, the firebox and the Boar Kings are a lot deeper. And I think that's why I'm not getting the ash kickback into the uh, the cook chamber like I have done on previous grills in the past. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to the PK360. So PK360 is a beast. Um, I think my grandchildren's grandchildren will end up cooking on this as cast aluminum. Um, it's a smaller barbecue. And if I'm honest, I have done things like low and slow, uh, like ham and ribs. Um, you're never going to get a full pack of brisket in it because it's just it's not going to fit. Um, but uh, I use this now as what I call my searing station. So if I'm going to do a steak or if I'm going to do loads of burgers, if I'm having a party, lots of people coming around, I will use the PK. Uh, and I've easily hammered out 40 or 50 burgers in this, like, so quickly. Um, 
what I've got in here is I've actually put a set of uh, grill grates, but underneath here, you've got your normal grates it comes with. The first section that you can see right to left until those two double parts here is where you would actually put your charcoal. On the other side, just here in the frame, is where you put your proteins. I tend to put like a piece of wood or something in there, um, and that would actually stop that heat from coming in. But the reason why I don't use it for low and slow is because you are gonna have to come back in here and top up your charcoal, um, and you're gonna have to turn your protein as well. It will come with two big side shelves, but again, just space-wise, I've taken it off. Dead easy to come off the stand, and if you've got a big enough car, you can take this on holiday with you. I have done it, it works a treat. I hope you all keep it up. <laughs> There's a quite a few barbecues, there's a lot to go through, um, but you know, we're gonna try and get there. Now, next one for me is my Kamado Joe. Um, now, what I'm gonna talk about first of all is why I bought the Kamado Joe over things like the Green Egg. And this is going back just over three years ago now where I was researching for months about ceramic barbecues. Um, hadn't really used one before. Um, I have now today cooked on, on others um, and you know, not had an issue with them. But for me, there was, there was a couple of things with the Kamado Joe range which really pipped it and why I um, chose Kamado. So first of all, what I will say is, what I'm gonna show you now, apart from the cast iron grate and the soapstone, which is inside the grill, everything else comes as standard with the pit. Everything, all your great, great, great grippers, your ash tool, your grates itself, your slow roller, your heat deflector plates, the cart, it all comes in one package. So what you see is what you get. You literally get this delivered to your house, you build it up, you fire it up and cook straight away. Um, I will mention a couple of points to it though, is people make mistakes with the ceramics because there's a vent at the bottom and a vent at the top where you need that to control for airflow and control your temperature. People make mistakes by adjusting those things too often and too quickly, um, minuscule adjustments, um, but also give it time. Um, also, when you're putting your food in here, make sure when you go to turn it on, when you go to turn it on, you go to turn it on, what? When you go to put your food inside of the piece of equipment, you need to make sure that it's hot to touch. That way you know that the ceramic is fully saturated with that heat and you are not going to draw all the heat away from the barbecue and get those temperature fluctuations. It's gonna take about 40 minutes or so to get up to that kind of 250 degrees Fahrenheit. But when you do that and you can kind of go, oh yeah, that's hot, then you're ready to go. Um, again, another reason why I bought this, a uh, bit of safety and also um, I don't want to suffer um, damages to it. So airlift hinge. Now for me, if you lift this barbecue up and you're searing something, you're going to get a massive waft of wait the lid. <laughs> you're going to get a massive waft of this hot air coming out at you. I've singed my arm hair a lot. It looks like I've waxed. I promise you I don't. It's just this. Um, but as you can see here, when you let go of the lid, the airlift hinge kicks in and it keeps that lid exactly where you want to leave it. Even if I bring it right down to the bottom, it stops it from slamming down. Now that's gonna be great when I'm not using it. If you know I've left the lid open, it's not gonna come down. If it does come down and my little girl's around it, she's not gonna get her fingers trapped in it. It's not gonna hurt her. So yes, so for me, the airlift hinge was probably one of the biggest reasons why I purchased this. So you've got your nice sturdy cart. You've got your deflector plates in there. But what you've also got in here, there's your airlift hinge at the back there. You get your standard grates in there, but you've got your slow roller. Now your slow roller is designed to increase the smoke profile into your food. And what that does is all the smoke comes up, it hits the plate at the bottom there. And as it comes out, it rolls over your food a little bit more. Uh, I think the maths are about 20, 30% more smoke profile um, on this one than if you just had your deflector plates in there. Um, you're gonna get your tail true gauge on the top. Um, you can get your accessories in here like your rotisserie, like I said, and it does come with the shelves. I've just taken them off for space. Now, at this point, there's a couple of things I wanna mention which I find really, really, really important when you're looking to buy yourself a grill. And that is the customer service side of things and the warranty. So the reason why I've stuck with the Gosney is because the, the customer service, Marta, I think her name is, 
is what and jade are 100 on point i've had a couple of issues with it and they've sorted it for me straight away the Kamado joe i've had a couple of issues with it and do you know what they've sorted it straight away i've never really had to wait more than kind of a week 10 days for anything replacement wise that i need um another good thing about this is you're going to get a proper gasket on the bottom there and on the top not that felt stuff that you can find in other barbecues so again that kind of keeps that retention in there um so hopefully i'm not at 50 minutes yet but let's move on to the traeger egg timberline xl she's so big um <laughs> Now, I have had the Timberline 1300, um, and if I'm honest with you, like, the XL is a great piece of kit. I don't, I don't fully understand why it's 3800 quid. Uh, the, new Tim, the old Timberline 1300, I think you can get um, now for, I want to say something in the region of two grand or less. Um, but i'm going to take you through this real quick um i've used it a couple of times now haven't had any issues with it and i must admit a few years ago when i had the 1300 and the pro 34 i had issues with them um you know i voiced those issues i didn't i didn't slag them off i just kind of shared with you guys what they were and i fell out of love with trading a little bit which was a shame because you know the reason why i came onto ball king was because uh, dave at the grill store actually sent me a crown 500 because he knew I missed cooking on my pellet grills. You know, the convenience of just loading the hopper up, going away for the day and coming back to your food, you know, I, I loved it. Yes, you can do it on the Kamado Joe. Uh, and I've only ever had two, maybe three instances where the coals have shifted inside and they've not kind of caught, so the temperature's dropped right down. But anyway, we're gonna talk about the Traeger, which I am now fully and truly in love with again. <laughs> Sorry. Right, so Timberline XL on this side here, you are going to get a quite a large induction hob which is great used it a couple of times to be honest with you unless i'm like right here cooking on the traeger i'm using my elfin kitchen because i've got two hobs on that one uh never really had the need to turn the third one on but i suppose it's great to have it right one thing that i think is brilliant is the way they've kind of utilized what they call this pop and lock system so this rail you can get different accessories so i've got my uh butcher's paper foil accessory in there i've got a couple of hooks i've got my storage bin and um, obviously my front shelf sits on there as well there's a couple of shelves down there but you can also put one of those pellet bins in the bottom here and then if you want to empty your pellets out just pull this sleeve and all the pellets fall through standard bamboo chopping board and in this you do get your pellet sensor as standard lifting up the cooking chamber what you do get is two lights um which i don't believe you had in the last one um and i do like this you do get a nice touch screen display um it's still the d2 uh, controller but you get to personalize it a little bit more i like that i'm sorry um another change that they've done with this one is they've made these three separate plates uh, grates at the bottom really thick um steel stainless steel um you can tell there's great quality behind them and then you've got your two racks at the top there um your temperature sensor is now down the back here so less likely to get damaged than like the old one um and i believe this might actually be bigger than the old timberline 1300 um, I don't know, I've not looked, but to me, it just feels in the cook chamber, it feels a, a chunk bigger. You are going to get the storage underneath, which I love my storage, and to be able to keep everything out here instead of running into the house, especially with the Elfin Kitchen over there, is brilliant. And your ash and grease collection is all done in this bucket now, which just clips back into place. So, um, like I said, as you know, I won this one from one of the SoCal raffles. Um, so they're not fake. Um, would I go out and buy that for 3,800 pounds? Chances are, I don't know, maybe not, if I'm honest. Um, I would probably go with one of the current Timberlines. Um, but saying that, I did have somebody message me what, recently saying they had a 1300, they were going to 
they were selling it because they're not using it, but they wanted one of these. Um, you can actually build this into an outdoor kitchen area as well if you wanted to, which is what the whole design is. Um, and yes, so I do, I love it, it's fine. Um, move on to the last pit. My Midwest Pits and Grills skinny pit. Um, I've thrown the cover over the back there because to be quite frank, I just want to do this video. Um, it's going to be a tricky one because there's not much I can talk to you about with this because this is my personal preference on the way this has been set out. The beauty about Midwest is no matter what you want or how you want it, they will do it for you. Um, and I don't have a bad word to say. I caused a huge argument in the barbecue world in one of the Facebook pages because I referenced another barbecue company um, as, in a manu as in like a manufacturer like Kamada Joe, for example, or Dosney. I mentioned another one and it, it annoyed some people. Would you know what? Tough, it's my opinion. I'm entitled to it. So I wanted to go for the square firebox. I kind of wish I had the cylinder firebox. And yes, you can have a hot plate inside it, but... I, I, th I think you need to get more space having the hot plate on the top there, which is great. The one thing I would change on this, I wouldn't have the butcher's block um, front shelf. It's great, don't get me wrong, but it's just a pain in the backside. I wish it had just for cleanliness kept it stainless steel um, all the way through. Um, I've gone for the um, counterweight on the top because it is a big beastie door. And I also went for the option on this to have it as an offset, but I can take that stack off and switch it over here and have it on this side as a reverse flow. Best thing about this, this is a low and slow cooker. In my opinion, you can cook, you know, hot and fast stuff in here. Um, but for me, it's about sitting by that open fire. You know, got my little girl on my lap most of the time. She sits with me. She says, daddy fire. When it starts to go down, she, she's catching on. So I'm gonna, by the time she's, oh, Give another six months or so. She's almost three. But give another six months and she will be cooking on these pits with me. Um, I really can't fault it. I think what the guys do in Midwest are 100% on point, which is why I'm an advocate for them. So if you are looking for an offset, the flavour you get from cooking off wood on that is, in my opinion, probably some of the best barbecue you're ever going to get. And then when we come on to my prep area. So I actually got the, the butcher's block table from Ikea, which was about £300 at the time. Love my Dal Strong products. So I've got my two chopping boards. I've got my Dal Strong knife block. Um, when we come over here, I've got more Dal Strong knives and stuff in here. This Derma pen, you know, if you haven't got one of them in your kitchen, then really you need to go and get one. Like I said, guys, I'm going to put links for everything down below where you can buy them and things like that. Um, but for me, you know, this is my skinny shack. Um, these are my this is my kit. Um, there's not really anything bad to say about any of them, but biggest question I get asked is, apart from why have you got so many? Sound like my wife. Um, but the biggest question I get asked, if I had to just have one, what would it be? Um, and in truth, it'd be the Commando Joe. Um, for me, even though the Borking is seriously impressive when it comes to that searing ability for steak, um, the Kamado Joe is a great all-rounder. Like, it's not really good at one thing. Like, the pellet grills are really good at low and slow. Um, the Kamado Joe, though, is just, for me, is the best thing I have for everything. Um, so if I had to take one away, like I had to take them all away and just keep the, and just had the one, for me it would be the Kamado Joe. The reason why I got rid of the Junior and the Classic 3 uh, and the Kettle is just because I wasn't using them. Um, you know, there's only so many barbecues you can have before they're just sat around for a few months at a time when you're not going to use them. So, this being said, um, my little announcement is I'm going to start doing some barbecue schools. Um, I've been thinking about this for a while. People have been asking me about it for a while, but I've got this great area out here. So we've got a great bit of outdoor space to kind of sit, eat, drink, have a chat. Um, but also it's going to give me a chance to kind of show people the different styles of barbecuing. Uh, you guys will get a chance to come and cook on them all, eat lots of food, drink lots of drink, and hopefully just have an amazing time 
learning loads, eating loads, drinking loads, and just having loads of fun. Um, so I'm going to get working on some dates. I'm going to get posting them about it real soon. I hope this video has kind of given you a little bit of an insight um, on the barbecues that I've got. A few points per one of, you know, why, they, why I personally think they're good. Um, and, you know, I hope to see some of you soon on the barbecue schools. Um, any questions you guys have on this, like I said, just drop me a message. I'm kind of, I love spending, you know, an hour or so in the evening replying to messages and stuff like that. Um, but like I said, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe and more. And um, I'll see you next time.